Hey, it's Frank Salinas here with the Groove.cm team. Today, I'm going to go over Groove Cart updates for September. I'm going to go over the features, improvements, and then I'll read off a list of bug fixes. So if your store is having any kind of issue, you can go back and check after I read off the list. I'm going to share my screen a few times related to the features and improvements. And so let's just get rocking and rolling. All right. I'll share my screen. All right. So the first thing here, new features. We added the quantity element on the upsell page. So let me go into the visual builder and just show you where that is. So if you go into the builder and you want to edit your upsell page, you can now have quantities. So what does that mean? Well, before people could only buy one of your upsell, but now if they want to buy more than one, they can do so. So as you can see, it's right here. Okay. I was testing it earlier and it's underneath the buy button. So I'm going to drag it in like that. And then we have it here, but let me show you where to find it. So in this case, if let's say that wasn't there, I would click on add upsell elements, product elements, and there you see the quantity selector and you would drag it in. Okay. So let me just delete it and then let me do it again and show you. So you go like this and then of course it probably won't drop where I need it to. Uh, there it goes. It looks good right there. If I wanted to, I could even, Put this, I like putting it underneath and there you go. Looks good. All right. So now let's go to the next feature. So now we have a new action on the float bar when you're working on an element. So let me just go back here and let me ch choose this element. And as you can see here now, there's this little icon looks like an indention. This will help you and uh, enable you to edit the padding and margin of any element that you're working on. On any page that you're working on in the builder, you can see it right here. This is now mimicking how groove pages work. So now you can edit the margin and padding for any element that you're working on very simply by clicking this, clicking on that icon, and then editing as needed. Okay, I'm not going to edit any settings right now for this. Let's just go ahead and save. And go back here. All right. So next, we remove the scroll effect on the um, product edit page. So this is when you're editing the product and the product settings. And uh, it was just uh, the way the page navigated when you clicked on the tabs. We removed uh, the scroll effect. Nothing, nothing major. But we did separate the images and videos to be individual before they were in the information section. That is now separate. So. Um, Nothing major, but it was an improvement that helps the flow of setting up the products uh, go better. Okay. And then this is uh, the documentation was updated for the public API related to uh, uploading images. So this only pertains to those that were uh, making custom apps and using our documentation. And then uh, we changed the element settings to be a pop-up, uh, just like Groove Pages. Okay. So what I mean by that in the builder, um, when you're clicking on something, if you wanted to edit the settings before, like maybe hyperlink something, that would be under the three dots. But now there's a cog. So now anything you're working on, depending on what the element is, you'll see those settings here. So let's go real quick. I'm going to show you. Let's say I was working on the home page and I wanted to hyperlink an image. Let's say I was working on this. OK, if I'm working on this before, you would edit the URL by clicking the three dots. But now. You click, uh, you click on the uh, cog icon, and now you can see the settings related to that element that you're working on here. All right. Now, for styling, that would still be under here. All right. But for settings like URL, the uh, the alt it attribute, things like that, that would be under this cog settings that mimics uh, Groove Pages 2.0. All right. So let's go back here and go over the next thing. So uh, there was some uh, user experience improvement on the digital product upload section. So if you have digital products, uh, we made that uh, easier to navigate and it's just a, a better look and feel when you go to set up those digital products, okay? And then we added uh, default customer groups so there wouldn't be any confusion when it comes to discounts and customer management. Just know on the back end, uh, things are working better. And so now your default customer groups like visitor, guest, uh, customer, those will work properly with the proper coupons when you set those up. Okay. 
And then there's a link element. Now you don't have to have a, a label or a title and you can set the spacing in between the uh, label and the icon. I'm going to show you how this works because this is good for people that want to hyperlink icons. And uh, let's say you add an icon to Facebook and you want to uh, link it to your Facebook page or you add Instagram and you want to link it to your Instagram account. I'm going to show you what this means. Okay, so if you go back into the builder, let's just say I want to add a link element. So we're going to go here to add content and link. So I drop it here and then I go back and it's here, right? So there we can go here and remember to edit those settings. You can click on this cog and it says click here. But let's say I wanted to say visit our fan page. I could go like so. And then I could add an icon. So I can go like this. And then let's say we're looking for Facebook. I can add that icon and then I can add spacing. All right. I can go like that and add spacing. This is good for those who uh, love uh, design and love getting really specific on the design of their stores and things like that. This came in handy because one of our uh, awesome designers asked for it. So we think you'll find this uh, very useful. And now if I wanted to link to this, I could just go down here for the link type and I want to open it in a new window and I want to do custom. And here I would put the URL to my Facebook fan page. Okay. So we think this will be very useful so you can connect to all your social media accounts. All right. And then also what I wanted to mention here is um, before you had to have a label, a title, so to speak, but now you can actually leave it empty and it'll still work. Okay. So then you just X out of here and save it and it'll show up. All right. All right, so now uh, the last improvement we made is you can now get back to any app inside of the Groove.cm platform by just hovering inside of your GrooveCart store. So I'm going to show you here. I'm going to exit here. And uh, it's just an easy way for you to navigate while you're inside of GrooveCart. We didn't have that before. So now it's just like you're inside the GrooveCM dashboard. So if you hover, now you can get to the dashboard of GrooveCM or you can go to any other app right here from inside of groove card so we think that's pretty cool and that'll help you save some time now i'm going to go over the bug fixes okay i'm just going to read these out and um, if you had an issue with this go back and check your store and uh, double check all right so there was an issue fixed with paypal where it was showing up as an option for payment but the paypal account was not validated yet so that's been fixed so one thing i want to note is double check your paypal settings go to your payment gateway Make sure that your PayPal is connected, that everything's updated. You can refresh the option and then log back in to make sure everything's working properly. Next, we uh, fixed an issue where the category element was not showing the correct products on mobile. So let's say you wanted only two products to show on mobile. It was showing on four. That's been fixed. Uh, there's an issue where the GrooveCart logo was disappearing when you click on the menu in the dashboard inside of GrooveCart. Now that's been fixed. And then if you're uh, wanting to edit your maintenance mode page, right, like the construction page, there are some styling issues there. That's been fixed. Uh, next, the store was overriding the meta description. So if you're working on a product and let's say you added a uh, product description, it was overriding what you had in the meta description under SEO. That's now been fixed. OK. And then uh, there was an issue on the checkout page where if you clicked on the outside of the one-time password box, it would go to a white page. That's been fixed, okay? Um, the order bumps on checkout, they were not displaying properly. So let's say you wanted to offer product A on the checkout page and your order bump, it was showing another product. So that's been fixed. So that's good. Uh, also, next, there was an issue where your compare price, if you had a variant that didn't have a compare price, it would still show a compare price and it would show the most recent compare price of the variant you clicked on before that. Okay. So that's been fixed. And there was an issue with the visual builder. Um, if you're editing just the mobile version of your page, you could not see all the icons. If you wanted to edit the float bar, the float bar, excuse me, that's been fixed. All right. And now the Google feed uh, generation works for your default currency before it was just us dollars. All right. And then this is also related to uh, public API. If you're working on an app, the uh, authorization uh, public API access was fixed. 
and uh, before it was uh, showing an error. So this is for a very small group of people that if you're working on a, a, a custom app for your store, that's been fixed, okay? And then also there was an issue where you couldn't sell uh, your digital products through your affiliate program. That's been fixed. So now you can offer physical and digital products in your uh, store's affiliate program. So that's great. And then on the Printful templates, when you'd set up a Printful template, let's say you added the description and a size chart, and you wanted to assign a tag, it would show as undefined after you saved that template. Now that's been fixed, so now it'll actually show the tag that you set up. So that's awesome. Um, there was some issues on the shopping cart element um, when you'd click on the float cart. So if you'd click on it to go to checkout, the title was short. We made those titles longer, and we changed some styling issues there. So um, that actually now looks a lot better than it was uh, how it did before. So go back and check that if you may. And then um, we had an issue where you would insert an element and it was 100% stretched to full width. And we know not everyone wanted full width on every element. So now when you add an element, it shows up boxed first, basically centered in the middle. Um, and you can choose to change it to full width if you want to by editing the settings, okay? And last but not least, we fixed an issue where the star colors were not changing. They were always yellow. Uh, but now if you update the star colors for your review settings, they will show up and reflect the proper color, okay? Uh, a few things to note. Orderlytics was removed because it looks like the service is no longer being offered uh, for Groovecart, so we removed that. And then Rontar, we removed that as well because Rontar does not support WebP images and every platform out there is updated to WebP, okay? They're smaller images, they load faster. Uh, Rontar was not supporting that, so we we'll removed that from the dashboard. With that being said, this is Frank Salinas. Thank you for watching this quick video. That's a summary of the features and improvements and bug fixes. We will see you on the next video.